A. Josh for introducing me. But once again, good day, tourism student. I am Arna Del Kairinching, a second year tourism student and your media committee of LTSP Batang State University chapter. I hope everyone have the courage and excitement in their spirit as we are about to start and we will make sure you will enjoy this day. But not just the fun, but of course the skills and knowledge to share that might be useful in our future careers. It is my privilege to introduce our first mentor. He is a senior chef member of Qatar Culinary Professionals, professional member of LTB, Philippine Chef Association, member of World Association of Chef Societies. Let us all welcome with loud and proud our first mentor, Mr. Airo T. Malinao. Hi, good morning. Morning, Paul. Yes, um, very much honored uh, to be part of this uh, program. All right, um, just want to share a uh, screen for you guys, uh, which I'm going to uh, talk about. And what are the points that we're going to discuss on today? All right, so we got four key points um, to discuss for today. Uh, what is gastronomy? What it takes to start a career in the food business in the new normal setting? And how to innovate food and elevate it from the competitor? And lastly, factors that should be taken into consideration in the food industry. All right, um, what is gastronomy? All right, um, a lot of questions being asked, uh, what is gastronomy, the difference of gastronomy and uh, gastronomist, chefs, culinary. Um, gastronomy is mainly um, the study of the relationship between food and uh, culture. It's the art of preparing and serving rich and delicate and appetizing food, the cooking styles of particular regions and the science of good eating. See, um, nowadays, um, even a slider or a mac and cheese can be a gourmet. Um, because we're going to talk about gourmet, why? Because gastronomy is related to gourmet and how we can be adjusting um, in the new normal setting using gastronomy. Um, a lot of restaurants, um, not only in the Philippines, um, all over the world, are being adjusted with delivery and uh, takeaway services. Right? And the most challenge is how um, we're going to serve a fine dining uh, food right, through takeaways and, uh, and deliveries. Right? How the customers can enjoy um, eating uh, takeaway food, delivery food right, that they used to pay um, in a five-star restaurant. Right? Um, I'm just going to break down with you guys uh, what are the different types of gastronomy for you to really understand um, gastronomy all about. The first one is the different types of gastronomy. Here is the national gastronomy. When you say national gastronomy, it has a strong link with the national identity of a country or a culture and involves the peace tradition or history. And I think it's more related um, with you guys with the tourism because um, having said uh, gastronomy that is um, a combination of a relationship of a food and a culture. I mean, um, having a tourism is only like a, a traveler, right? Or the one is going to uh, visit a specific country because of food that they are serving. Here is the top 10 uh, best food in the world in the first quarter of 2021. We got here Italy, China, France, Spain, Japan, India, Greece, Thailand, Mexico, and the United States. So don't be surprised because Philippines is not yet there in the top 10. Um, hopefully, right, we can be on their um, top 50 right, very soon. Italy uh, is really um, doing well in terms of food and just Two days ago, oh no, just yesterday, 
um, and he, in the pastry world cup Italy also took uh, the gold medal and silver medal was in Japan and bronze uh, goes to France so this is before France is really dominating uh, the whole culinary scene um, now they're getting left behind All right um, food is an amazing thing and there's so many aspects to it we don't often realize and take for granted like we cook we eat, we grow, but it's so commonplace that we often don't give in our thought. Um, those who focus on food, its preparation, its place in society, its taste and textures are given the label foodie. Um, the term foodie is a bit uh, controversial, but it, the meaning is clear. Uh, foodie means um, they're the one who cares a lot about food. And nowadays, everyone can be gastronomist. I mean, we don't realize in our own um, kitchen, sometimes we create something, right? Whatever we had in, inside our kitchen, right? And um, we, we, we chose uh, what kind of seasoning, sauces, right? We, think, well, we tend um, to create something, right? What's available in your kitchen, right? And that's actually um, gastronomy. I mean, gastronomy is not just about eating healthy food. It's about creation. It's about finding um, what you have uh, in your kitchen, what you have in your country, right? The second type of gastronomy is gourmet gastronomy. Um, it involves uh, signature cooking methods. There is avant-garde um, culinary trends. Um, when you talk about gourmet uh, gastronomy, um, these are the chefs who is pushing the limits in culinary industry. Like they're the one who create um, different ideas. They're the one who create trending, right? If you're gonna check, um, search in Google, uh, trending food, there is a lot, right? And a food will not be a trending if there is no one who's creating it. And um, as one of my job uh, here in Qatar as an R&D chef, that's also the one um, we used to do. Like we get paid to create uh, different kind of dishes and to make it a trending one. So that's gourmet gastronomy. Third is vegan gastronomy. It doesn't use any type of animal uh, derivate and description. So there's no meat, no dairy, right? Um, mainly fruits and cereal, all right? So vegetable, fruits, and cereal. So, the third type of gastronomy, uh, these are the chefs who's mainly focusing um, on the non-animal uh, uh, dishes, right? So they care about, they care a lot uh, for the one who, who lives. So they're focusing. I think um, nowadays, there's about um, 15 to 20% um, uh, vegan eaters already. So that's why they decided to, um, to create it. Uh, also a certain uh, dishes for uh, vegan. The fourth one is micro, a uh, macrobiotic gastronomy. It is governed by uh, macrobiotic principles. That is by a balance between food related to the biochemical composition of the body. Mainly this is for uh, the one who really um, ate um, organic food. Because this uh, chef, so this person, um, they tend to balance the yin yang uh, ways of living. So this kind of macrobiotic gastronomy, um, mainly you can find in the, um, in the Hinduism. Like so, they they value um, like they they tend to count um, the uh, the organic, the macro, the macrons of what they eat. Um, it's a bit complicated uh, in terms of macrobiotic uh, gastronomy, and it's quite expensive in terms of. Uh, making uh, this such of this. Uh, next one is religious gastronomy. Those shared by different people who have similar religious culture. Um, one good example is uh, Islam. So like, uh, I don't know if you heard halal foods, right? So those one of the, the best example. Um, they are focusing um, on main, uh, like they, they tend, um, to link the religion uh, based on what the food uh, they are preparing. So that's uh, religious um, gastronomy. 
Um, the three important concepts of uh, astronomy is uh, we call gastronom or the food scientist, or also we call it um, gastronomist, right? Um, the history and the technique of that what we cook. So that's that's really separate uh, gastronomist to a chef and a cook, right? Because they're normally the, the one who cooks, right? So you have, you have a cook, you have a chef and a gastronomist. Again, gastronomist is the one who cares with the culture and history of what they do or what, or what they prepared and the technique of cooking. Cooks, they just cook whatever is the recipe or the standard of a restaurant. A chef is the one who handles the kitchen, right? They also create uh, things, but just depend on what is the concept it's all about, right? So when you talk about gastronomy, you should have a gastronomist or a food scientist who really understand uh, what is food is all about. So again, here are the uh, five types of uh, gastronomy. You got national, gourmet, vegan, macrobiotic, and uh, religious, right? Um, next one is what it takes to start a career in f and uh, in the new normal setting. Um, it's a really great question. Why? Because, you know, what it really takes in a career in f and business, it's actually a great time uh, right now. Right? After COVID, um, the industry is evolving. Uh, most of the, uh, the F&B companies who recently closed down, um, they're bouncing back. Um, as I said, the industry is evolving. Safety standards are getting higher. Better working conditions. Why? Because there's a lot of COVID safety protocols. And you know what's the best thing also? Now uh, it's a really good chance because we're getting higher offer in terms of wages or salaries. Why? Because there, I mean, the whole world is um, not enough staffing. Um, even here uh, in Qatar, <clears throat> but also one of our, you know, main struggles. Every establishment here, every restaurant, hotel, um, are really not having enough staff. Um, it's quite expensive because every time you need to hire someone, <clears throat> it, uh, it needs quarantine. You need to pay for the hotels and everything. That's the reason why um, the, the salary packages are, are getting higher. Like uh, we used to get normal staff before for like 2,000 uh, real. Um, now we're offering 2,500 to 3,000. So that's really quite the jump, like 30 to 50% jump in the salary. All right, so what it takes, you need to showcase your soft skills. Right. If you're thinking um, a career uh, in the F&B or food and beverage industry, especially uh, with the new normal setting, customer service. Um, I think any kind of, uh, in any field, right, number one is customer service. I mean, that's how you get hired um, when you attend an interview, right? Because especially if a, new, uh, a newly grad applying for, for any kind of position, this is the best thing you can offer is the customer service. Right. Teamwork. Teamwork is really the, uh, the backbone of everyone. I mean, any kind of industry, food and beverage, hotels, tourism, right? If there's no teamwork, right, um, nothing would work for sure. Um, attention to the details it is very important if you're working in the F&D industry to attend in every or to be attentive in every detail of what we do on a daily basis interpersonal skills, our behaviors, attitudes, right? Um, I'm talking about good attitude for sure, because if you don't have a good attitude, then you will not last uh, in this kind of industry. Time management, yes, because um, in this industry, um, eight hours is just a short shift, right? You will have 10, 12, 14 hours. Um, I've been working with the same, 46 hours a day. And really, if you don't manage your time properly, right, you always get left behind on your task. Um, multitasking, since um, if you're gonna start in this industry, I mean, you're not just gonna plan to, to be 
to be a waiter or to be a server, to be a cook, right? Or to be a cashier. So if you really want to survive in this industry, multitasking is one of the key, right? Learn everything. Uh, well, you're still in the job, learn everything in every corner. Safety consciousness, which is really the most important part, having COVID safety protocols, right? I think most of the restaurants right now, um, especially I think in Philippines, right? They already started 10% uh, seating inside and most of them are having uh, as fresco areas. Communication plus listening, uh, one of the most important um, skills that you must, if you're really interested, you know, to get a job, to get a career in this industry, because you need to talk. I mean, if you don't know how to talk, if you don't know how to communicate, uh, then you might choose a different uh, field, not F and B. Because here you are talking to human beings, right? The one who really, you know, giving you business. Okay. Right. How to innovate food and elevate uh, from competitors? It's a really uh, great discussion, you know, on how to innovate food and elevate it from competitor. Um. I cannot really elaborate uh, with you guys on how we are doing um, food innovation, but I'm just going to give you um, a few ideas. All right. What is food innovation? Food innovation is the development and the commoditization of new food products, process, and uh, services. What is the purpose of food innovation? Innovation is the lifeblood of the food industry. And it's essential for ensuring profitability and survival. Consumer demands and expectations are constantly evolving, and retailers are seeking new products to meet these needs. See, um, the one I talked about a while ago, you know, uh, trending foods. That's how food innovation um, really moving forward. If you're still serving uh, the same uh, topsy log. Uh, 10 years back, right? Then you will not be in this business anymore and this food and beverage industry. Um, here, it's, it's all about what is really um, the people are looking forward to it. I mean, is it, is it about um, just uh, a normal um, tapa with sinangaga with it log? Or people are looking to get something that they can take a photo, right? Post in the Instagram or Facebook, right? Before eating. I think that's, that is the, the normal uh, setting of, of how we dine um, recently, right? In this world of uh, social media, it's all about Instagrammable, right? Even um, with the new uh, settings or setup of food business, that's how really this industry is going for, right? It's about um, the decoration, it's about the, the environment inside, um, the way you present your food. Like I talked about a while ago, gourmet, um, how can you transform a normal topsy log into a gourmet, right? Like a normal set of, of food, right? We, we serve it um, with, uh, Three o'clock, nine o'clock, and six o'clock. That's how normal plating goes. Three o'clock is we place um, the the tapa, right? In the in six o'clock or the one uh, facing is the sinangag, and in the nine o'clock that's where you place um, it log. So that's a normal uh, plating. When you talk about gourmet or or food innovation, um, you can sell that. Um, simple tapa from, from 25 pesos to 150 pesos be the same. So how are you going to do it, All right? Um, you change the plating. You change the way how you serve that dish. You get the sinangag, put it in the center, right? On top of it, you put the egg. And on top of the egg, you put the tapa. And that's gourmet. Gourmet, right, is feeding you first on how you see the dish before you actually ate it. So that's what I said. From 25 pesos 
Now you can sell your Tapa Gourmet for 150 pesos. That's one part of food innovation, right? Changing the way it looks. The second part of food innovation is um, how um, you're going to elevate the food that you're creating in your competitor. Now, what you need to do is to check what is in the competition, right? There, you need to double check from where this competition is uh, left behind. Um, what are the mistakes that they've been doing? So that's how, or that's where you focus in terms of innovation, okay? So create something that the other restaurants are being missing, right? Don't create a something, you know, totally different that people doesn't know about it, right? Um, when you're setting a trend in terms of food, right, you are diverting them into something else. It's not just copying of what others are doing, right? It's how you're going to look Check with them what actually are been missing for them. Let's say, for example, um, uh, a burger shop is being all right. One of the ten uh, food business now in, in the Philippines, right? Um, I think Shake Shack recently uh, opened up, right, in the Philippines. I don't know if it was like a few, uh, few months ago or just or last year. Um, when Shake Shack opened in Philippines, um, as people know the brand. Right, it's been dominating in, in the US, right? They're being crazy, right? And going there, falling in line, right? Just to grab a burger without them realizing that Shake Shack is really serving um, a frozen, uh, frozen beef and a frozen um, bun. So, how I can, you know, innovate something better. Uh, of what they're serving, I would, you know, uh, go away from serving frozen goods, right? I can make a uh, fresh party, fresh bun, right? That I can offer to the market. And from there, I can remove the fast food effect um, from the people who ate burgers because they always, you know, put the label that burger is a fast food. Um, it's not good for your health, but no. If you, right, grind your own beef, serve it fresh, bake your own buns, make your own sauces, right? That's how you can send, right, uh, a not so good fast food into a healthy food. So that's food innovation. So that's one thing, right? Again, food innovation is something, right, um, moving, right, uh, bad idea or bad habit from the one who ate and then create something that would really benefit them. Okay, so next to talk about here is factors that should be taken into consideration in the food industry. You know, um, this food industry is really quite uh, challenging. And what's the good about uh, having this challenge is there's always new. I mean, I will not last um, 17 years in this industry if I don't really love uh, food and beverage. I mean, this is my passion, this is my life already. I've been working in this industry since 2004, right? So let's break it down and how I'm gonna start. So here you got fund, skills, business plan, setting up your business, investing in products and tools, hiring staff, that your pricing, create online presence, serve up delicious food. Let's talk about first fund. If you're thinking about having a food business or you want you know, to be in, the, in that business, the first thing you need to see is, do I have funds? Do I have enough funds and how I'm gonna start up my own business, right? Because the funds that you have will also give you an idea um, what kind of food business I'm going to start up. Is it a takeaway, um, a food truck, a kiosk, a whole uh, set up dining restaurant, right? So that depends on um, how much funds you have in hand. Um, you can take loans, 
right? Or tips from your savings. Second is skills. Um, the first thing you need to remember when you put up a food business is you need to create a menu. So do you have cooking skills, right? Do you know how to create menu? Because if you don't know, then it will be another um, expenses. Why? Because you need to hire, right? A professional chef to create dishes for you instead of you doing it. That is the second thing. The skills in terms of uh, purchasing, because you need to deal with different suppliers. When you put up a food business, you need to do that. You need to buy. I mean, how are you gonna sell if you don't have anything to sell? So you need to have a good relationship with your supplier. Um, skills in terms of accounting. Why? Because you're gonna put up a business and you need to know if your business is having a profit. So you need to do a PNL or what we call profit and loss report. So that should be an accounting skills. Marketing, yes, because you need to market your restaurant. I mean, it's not, I mean, you're, we're not Gordon Ramsay, but if you open up one restaurant, people are gonna run, right? Just to be there. So you need to really work hard in terms of marketing. And that's one I told like create an online presence because nowadays it's all about online. It's about deliveries and takeaways. And you know what guys, in terms of delivery, um, this food delivery business, um, they actually gone up three times since last year. So the one who put up um, this food delivery services, right, are now harvesting the one they uh, planted a um, couple of years ago because of this uh, pandemic. And this pandemic, this COVID, will still be there in the next few years. And what we need to do is to cop up of what is really happening right now. When you think about of putting up a food business, you should be flexible. How many diner restaurants closed down already, right? Um, so this, uh, there's a good and bad um, you know, outcome uh, on a pandemic, but also one good thing is now it's a good time to start up a food business. Why? Because you know already on how you will make an adjustment. So now you can focus on your kitchen, right? In the packaging on how you're gonna serve up really delicious food, right? And not compromising the standard and the quality, right? In the packaging, in the takeaways, delivery, and now you're gonna reduce your dining service. Now you're gonna focus more on your kitchen. Um, just to give you an idea, here in Qatar, 70% um, of food business are moving to a cloud kitchen. When you say cloud kitchen, you can actually open up your own food business using your own kitchen, right? Just have it registered with food delivery, but make sure you, you secure um, a license and a permit, right? And then you go with food uh, deliveries, you go with takeaway, right? So instead of you paying um, or spending something for, for pay, to pay a rent, right, and hire more staff, you can start with a small one, like I said, a cloud kitchen, okay? Um, with all of having said of this uh, food business a startup, the most important part in here is you serve up delicious food. I mean, all the preparations, you have budgeting, um, creating a business plan. If you don't serve a delicious food, then you will not have a return business. And Exactly, that's 60% um, of, of the failure of the one who put up uh, food business, you know, are, uh, are not prepared for this startup or this things that you need um, to, to establish or to, to get prepared, you know, when you think about uh, food uh, business. Um, 
I think we already got uh, all the key pointers of today's um, topic. Uh, if you guys um, having any question, um, I will be ready to, to answer those. So thank you very much po, Mr. Iro T. Malinaw for imparting your knowledge and for generously sharing your time and expertise with us. Maya-maya po, magkakaroon po tayo ng open forum. And alam mo ba, T.A. Josh? Yes, po. Ang pinaka-favorite part ko na diniscuss ni Mr. Malinaw ay yung national gastronomy or should I, should I say national dish with that particular country. Kasi nga sabi niya, it is strong link with the national identity of a country or a culture. Kasi syempre tayong mga tourism students, we want to experience the culture and traditions of other country. And syempre, pati na rin yung mga foods nila. Kaya naman, napaisip ako, for example, sa atin, no, kapag sinabing adobo, ang maiisip agad ng mga tao, ah, sa Pilipinas yan, di ba? Wow, adobo. Sa Pilipinas, sa may pinakamasarap na adobo. Right, T.A. Josh? Yes, you're right, T.A. Joy. I would have to say, T.A. Joy, ladies and gentlemen, my key takeaway from Mr. Malinaw is when he said that gastronomy is the art of preparing and serving rich or appetizing food. Grabe, specifically term serving rich foods, no? Eh, gastronomy pala ang tawag doon, T.A. Joy. At napakarami pang informative facts ang naipahayag ni Mr. Iro T. Malinaw Kaya naman may bagong nadagdag sa aking kalaman in terms of food and beverage industry. Tama ka dyan, T.A. Josh. And now, dahil alam naman natin na hindi lang tayo ang gustong mag-share ngayon, dahil napakarami natin kasama ngayon sa Zoom at mapa-Facebook Live, dahil alam kong marami din tayong mga kasamang external audiences na gustong magtanong at magbigay ng kanika nilang insights. And now, we will proceed to our open forum. Right, T.A. Joy, we will give this opportunity to every student who wants to ask questions and clarifications. And let Mr. Iro T. Malinaw enlighten us. Ayan, so we will just follow the format, name underscore your university underscore your question. And for our Zoom participants, we highly encourage po to open your microphone and cameras para po kayo po ang personal na magtanong o maghayag na gusto nyong itanong kay Mr. Malinaw. At para naman po sa mga nasa Facebook Live, kami na po ang bahala magbasa ng inyo-inyong mga questions. Kaya naman, wag na wag kayong mahihiyang mag-ask ng questions kay Mr. Malinaw because he is encouraged to answer your questions. Kahit ano pa yan, kung curious man kayo sa mga bagay na dis diniscuss niya, eh, wag na wag kayong mag-hesitate, mag-open ng cam at mag-open ng microphone. Mga nagkakahayaan pa ang ating mga katuristas. Go lang mga katuristas. This is your chance para malaman yes. nyo kung anong mga gusto nyong malaman. So guys, you can ask any questions about what Mr. IRT Malinaw have discussed. Go on. Hello po, good morning po, um, Mr. Aisha Pairo. So I, my name is Jacob Emmanuel P. Baredo po and I'm the Vice President for Internal Affairs of the LTSP. So my question po, Sir uh, Aisha Pairo, it is connected po with the forms of gastronomy na sinabi niyo po. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think po saan pong form ng gastronomy uh, Philippines can excel at po? Uh, ano po yung nakikita niyong pwedeng uh, pag-focus pag, uh, kung saan po pwedeng mag-focus ang Philippines po na form of gastronomy? Uh, and the one, actually, in the national, um, like uh, what uh, Crystal uh, mentioned a while ago, um, if people think about adobo, right, for sure they're gonna think about person, uh, Philippines. But, you know, for us to be there, um, like to be really specialized on, on what we do or on what dishes uh, would really, you know, evolve or represent Philippines. I think um, we really need, you know, to, to push um, the border of, of culinary cuisine or culinary uh, scene uh, in the Philippines. I mean, we always stand on, on keeping uh, the traditional, like we don't even have uh, actually a, a traditional one, right? Because everyone can cook different types of adobo. Right. And I think just recently there's like some silly ideas that they would like to uh, put up a standard um, settings or, or cooking of, of adobo. 
I think if we really um, like uh, just to give an idea, uh, there is no such Filipino restaurants or cuisines yet um, having or getting a, a Michelin star, which is that's one of the uh, uh, I can say uh, based on on how this uh, best food in the world is being rated, right? Um, if we really you know focus on on the dishes that we have, how are we gonna uh, serve it totally different of what we used to do because see mainly Filipino cuisines are focusing on what family serving right if you're gonna visit one Philippine uh, Filipino restaurant Maxis or, or, or any kind of other uh, brand right they tend to serve uh, family serving which is um, I cannot say no unless because that's how we really you know um, grow up um, eating uh, the same or family serving Filipino restaurants but again we really need to push the border on it and that's why I would think um, Filipino delicacies or Filipino cuisine would really strong um, have in this national uh, gastronomy um, if someone or a Filipino chef you know is having a courage to, to really innovate Filipino cuisine right we yes we really you know um, gonna excel in terms of uh, national economy. Yeah, so thank you so much po sa ating unang questioner sa unang nagtanong at marami pa po tayong chances na pwedeng magtanong. Go lang po mga katuristas. Ayan, meron po dito sa comment box na nagtanong from Miss Kyrene. Kung may will po kayo na magbigay ng chance sa katulad ko na mangarap, kasi sa katulad ko na pangarap talaga ang magtrabaho sa kitchen at maging magaling na chef na gaya nyo, matutulungan nyo po ba ang mga gaya namin na makapasok sa industry or department kung nasaan po kayo lalo po sa sitwasyon ngayon na new normal. Ah, okay, this is from Brian pala, from HM4101. You can answer po, Mr. Uh, Brian. Ah, oh, yes, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, like what I said a while ago, um, a lot of new hiring uh, nowadays here. In, um, I'm actually working in Qatar uh, dinner, uh, for the last seven years. And yes, we are, we are really hiring. And we always, you know, tend to, to get um, newly grad because we know that we can really teach them right, with the standards. Uh, nowadays, we're moving away from those um, experienced ones. You know? um, so I think we, we would like um, everyone to, you know, uh, welcome uh, especially newly grad um, you can check my uh, facebook page uh, chef iro uh, shoot me um, a message there a private message right and you can also drop uh, your uh, cv um, in my email address it's uh, chef iro at gmail.com chef iro marino at gmail.com so yun, sana po ay nasagot ni Mr. Malinaw ang inyong kata katanungan, Mr. Brian. And yes, may katanungan rin po si Kimberly from 1101. How gastronomic features of different countries affect their tourism industry? Uh, um, affecting a lot. Actually, it, it's the main thing. Uh, like I said, um, there's two types of, of travelers, right? Um, one that's really looking for uh, traveling to to be in that destination, and the second one is looking forward to to taste the authenticity of the food that they are offering. And yan, thank you for Paul for that wonderful answer. Sana po na sagot niya yung katanungan na binigay ni Miss Kimberly, and may katanungan rin po si. Miss Crystal May Amido from LTSP National. In your own perspective, sir, saan po nagkulang ang Pilipinas at di po siya kasali sa si top 10 best gastronomy? 
that's a good question actually um if you're gonna look at the uh, the countries not in the top 10 uh, there's still a lot of other countries so it's really serving really good food and they're not part of you know the top 10 um i think uh like i said a while ago um still uh, filipino dishes need more um innovation uh if you're gonna um think of any competition cooking competitions internationally all right um it's very rare that you will find a, uh, a filipino cuisine category and good news about it here in qatar um for two consecutive years already uh when when having our um culinary or southern culinary it's like a, a big competition of, of chefs here in qatar and they started putting up uh filipino cuisine because uh there's two filipino chefs being part of the board member of Qatar Culinary Professional, which is me and one of my co-founders of uh, MAGA 1991 Culinary, they started welcoming the ideas of serving uh, Filipino dishes internationally. So I think um, Philippines really need to focus, right? Uh, introducing um, more of our uh, traditional cuisine, right? And putting a twist, right? To make it into a, a five-star fine dining service. Ayan, so thank you so much po. And now we're last two questions na lang po. Pwede pa po kayong mag-ask sa mga nasa Zoom. Pwede po kayong mag-open ng inyong cameras and microphones. Camera and microphones po. Kay Rin Ching, meron po ba kayong question? Hi po. Ayun po, meron po. Hi sir, Hi. good din po. Uh, ako nga pala po si Kenji, uh, media committee po ng LTSP. So, ayun Hi. po, ang question ko po is, hmm, ano ba ito? Uh, paano nyo po may encourage uh, ang mga students or graduates na pasto po sa gantong industry po or sa ganyang industry po, katulad po ninyo? Ano po yung mga advantages or benefits na pwede na lang makuha pag pumasok po sila sa ganyang industriya po? Yun na po. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a good question, uh, Erin. Um, actually, first, uh, when you say encouragement, um, it's not really that uh, that much. But because, see, the first thing is you need to really, you know, uh, to have a passion in this field. It's either uh, you focus on food and beverage, tourism, or culinary, right? Because that's uh, the whole part of hospitality management. Um, if it's really your passion to cook and you have the talent to cook, right? Then go for it. I mean, the food and beverage industry is a never-ending learning. Right, like uh, even me, I'm, I'm I'm still learning on a daily basis. I, just, I think that that that's really you know the most challenging part of having this job because whenever you start cooking, uh, whenever um, you start uh, going to different kind of restaurants, different cuisines, um, it, it it's more exciting. You know, every time you discover new dishes, you created something. Um, it, it's really something else. I mean, it, it's not boring. That's the first thing. You always met people. You talk to them. Um, every time you learn something, you can also teach your colleagues, right? So the most encouraging part is, like I said, it's, it's, it's not boring uh, profession. It's not boring industry, right? You always learn something new. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bobby, Thank you sir. so much, sir. Now we're down to last one question, mga katorista. And habang naghahanap pa po ang ating committee ng mga question from Facebook Live, um, babanggitin ko po muna ang ating hashtags ng bawat factions. Hashtag Steve's underscore Red Spartans. Hashtag Abnegation Reigns. Hashtag Know Where You Belong. Hashtag Tourism Day 2021. And Hashtag LTS Padayon. And also, I would like to promote our partner schools, the LPU Laguna and University of Perpetual Health Delta System Kalamba Campus. 
Ayan, so may question na po tayo, Mr. Malinaw. And the question is, innovation is considered to be a big point to those people who are starting a new business. It is considered to be both lucky and risky at the same time. In your opinion, if an individual would like to start a business that is all about food, should he or she innovate an unknown but unique dish or just stick with the same ordinary all delicacies that are already known by his or her target market? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, see, uh, food innovation um, is not really linked um, in, in the startup uh, business. Um, somehow, uh, yes, that's something really uh, risky, you know, because see, the thing is, the first thing when you, when you start up a business, you need to look for uh, your market, your target market, right? I mean, like I said a while ago, you're not going uh, to to open um, a certain uh, cuisine if you don't have a market uh, on that area. So when you start up a business, when you plan to, to open up a business, the first thing you need to do is to do feasibility study. Before doing anything, food innovation and everything, <clears throat> the first thing you need to comply is feasibility study. Check who is your competitors. What are the cuisine um, around the competition, around the area? Who is your market? Who is your target market? Right? And then from there, when you put up already your, your feasibility study, don't forget to do SWOT analysis, right? Because you need to analyze what are the strengths of your competitors? What are the weaknesses? What is the opportunity for you to put up your own food business? And then you can move to innovation, right? It's never risk, right? If you do or you follow the right procedures, okay? Create something that others doesn't have and you think that people around or your market or your target market, right, would love to have that kind of dish. Then you can move forward for your food innovation. I mean, it's not, it's not really, you know, uh, boring or you know, to, to speak with what is the usual one, but it depends. It depends on what is the usual one. Is it really selling or not? Or maybe the usual one, you can create something else from there. Okay, so follow the procedure, check the process, then you go for food innovation. And thank you, sir, for sharing your insights. Please stand by because we will award your certificate in a while. And so, ayan, mukhang napahaba na po ang ating chikahan. Maraming salam sa nagpahayag ng questions at sana ay marami kayong natutunan ngayon.